Hi, I'm Barbara Mangum, and I'm the president of the Board of Trustees at the Somerville Museum. And hi, I'm Evelyn Battinelli, and I'm the director at the Somerville Museum. Welcome, Welcome to, to our space. space! I have been involved with the museum from the perspective of an art conservator. Um, I was brought in to do a condition survey of part of the collection, and that was in 2004. And as a result of that, I saw that there were a number of needs at the museum, and so I tried to help, just like many people who volunteer here at the museum. And uh, that eventually grew into some more significant fundraising and work. And so uh, eventually, um, in 2011, I was brought onto the board of trustees, and I was elected president. In 1973, my daughter was in kindergarten and I met a friend that I had grown up with, and she also had a daughter about the same age. And once, one um, day she said, we should join this historical society because Isabel Cheney was going to be performing Christmas music, I think it was, on a Sunday afternoon. So we came and we became life members for $50. In 1897, a group of um, prominent uh, citizens of the city decided to form a historical society. And um, they were holding their meetings in the Oliver Tufts house, which was down on Sycamore Street. By the 1920s, they had raised enough money to buy this little plot of land that was um, the last undeveloped piece of land in this Westwood Road um, area. And they um, started off a building. By 1925, they had the cellar, mostly. Uh, they, they were holding their meetings down in the basement. And the rest of the structure went up. I'm not too sure about the exact timing, but um, it operated as the Somerville Historical Society until the, the mid-1970s. The building, the building changed hands from the Historical Society to this little group of um, Harvard grads that had decided that they would stay here in Somerville, but they would focus on some project. Um, and it was Joe Mackey, Paul and Susan Kelly, and Steve Mackey, who's now ch uh, the um, head of the Chamber of Commerce. The original trustees that renovated and started to renovate this building in the 80s, uh, the 70s and 80s, are still on our board. Gene Broom, Steve Mackey, well, Paul Kelly uh, left in 2012 and uh, Regina. Regina Pisa, yeah. Um, Billy White came later. Billy White came later. The staircase that you see here was designed by Charles Bullfinch in 1792 for the uh, Joseph Barrow Mansion that was located on Carvel Hill here in Somerville. And the Millers River ran right in uh, along the front of this mansion. By 1816, uh, Benjamin Joy sold Joseph Burrell's mansion to the Mass General Hospital for the McLean's Asylum. And from 1816 to 1895, the um, McLean's Asylum was here. After 1895, they moved to that site in Belmont. So um, the staircase is a national treasure. Now one of the other architectural details is the front uh, entrance here. It's the Central Street entrance. And that was uh, designed by George Loring for the first library, which was up on Central Hill beside the now City Hall and the high school, the uh, main building to the high school. The high school has two wings, the east wing and the west wing. But the um, Loring Library was situated between 
the main part of the high school in City Hall. So the Somerville Museum works really closely with two other groups in Somerville to produce a lot of historic events. So one is the city, because we couldn't do anything without the city's permission, and that's the City Preservation Commission. And then also the Historic Somerville, which is a different group and is very confusing uh, in its title because the museum used to be the Somerville Historical Society. But this is a separate group called Historic Somerville. Anyway, so it's actually through Historic Somerville that the Dozen program has been expanded. Um, the costumes are kept here at the museum, which is really great for us. Um, but we actually involve a number of teenagers who are in the history club, local history club up at the high school. Um, and then also uh, other docents, uh, older people who would like to you know, just love history. And um, so we now have a docent program at three different sites, Prospect Hill, uh, Milk Road Cemetery, and now Powerhouse. We also have one of the only intact relics for the Revolutionary War, which is the Powderhouse. The raid on the Powderhouse was on September 1st of 1774. That was um, six or seven months prior to the going, uh, the, um, the British actually going to Concord to retrieve the gunpowder from the Concord Museum uh, magazine. But um, the Powder House was taken over in 1747. It was originally built in 1703 as a, a mill, a windmill, which ground the grains from the local farmers. Uh, a, farmer, a fellow by the name of um, Malay um, had uh, built this uh, mill and it operated until 1747 when the Bay Colony took it over and used it as a magazine for the gunpowder. Michael O'Connell, our exhibition director from eight, uh, 1986, he um, has just retired. But over the years, Michael has developed a, a program where he invited curators from the local community to come in and put on uh, exhibitions. He reached out to um, musicians, to artists, and um, cultural groups. So it did, uh, you know, our mission was always to reach out to people within our own communities that um, wished to um, put on an exhibition. One of the first ones that he did with uh, Nancy Natal was an exhibit on um, the Buried River, which is the Miller's River. And most of it is buried. There is only one little bit of the lagoon left, and that's in Cambridge, down by the um, Boston Sand and Gravel. You know, with all the new um, transplants, yeah. They find it by accident. Right. Yesterday I had somebody walking down Westwood Road and they um, looked at the building and they said, um, well, what's this? And they ended up coming in to hear the concert. Mm -hmm. I'm Barbara. And I'm Evelyn. Please, Please come, come down, down and visit us. us.